soil restoration is the genesis of ecosystem restoration. What I've come to learn as a farmer and a scientist is that soil is a precious gift, that when we damage the soil, we damage ourselves. Soil is the foundation of all life. And when we fail to recognize that, then we fail on a broad scale. So the question we have to ask ourselves is this, can regenerative farming make a difference, a real difference? There are two very recent articles, one from Climate Australia titled 10 Reasons Our Civilization Will Soon Collapse. And out of those 10 reasons that were listed there, five of them are directly addressed by regenerative agriculture. And they include things such as dwindling resources, water shortages, soil erosion, biodiversity loss, and climate change. And then the second article is in National Geographic titled The Race to Capture Carbon 12 Strategies. Strategy number five was listed as farming smarter. And we call that farming regeneratively. So we have to have a definition for regenerative agriculture. And with an understanding ag, this is how we define it. We define it as farming and ranching in synchrony with nature to repair, rebuild, revitalize, and restore ecosystem function, starting with life within the soil and expanding to life above. So what we have discovered is that we can use the domesticated livestock that we have today as a proxy for the more than 100 million wild ruminants that once roamed North America. And we can use these through biomimicry and ecomimicry to restore ecosystem diversity and to build significant soil fertility. So as we move along the continuum from continuous or what many call conventional grazing to what we term adaptive multi-paddock or amp grazing, we begin to see life returning to the landscape. Again, starting with life beneath the soil surface and expanding to life above. So let me take you on a journey across North America and give you three examples. Let's start in the Central Valley of California. Now what you see before you are typical almond and walnut orchards. You see a lot of bare soil. And these growers are highly reliant on copious amounts of irrigation, synthetic fertility, and pesticides. But can we do it differently? Let's take a look. In the same Central Valley, this is a regenerative orchard. You see no bare soil here, none whatsoever. Every square foot of soil is covered by a highly complex, diverse cover crop mix. And then when we expand our regenerative principles and practices by adding livestock over top of that to add fertility and biology, we radically alter this landscape. And what happens here is these growers have significantly reduced their reliance on irrigation, on synthetic fertility, and on pesticide use. And by the way, the trees and the nut crops are much healthier and they are generating additional revenue streams off of the exact same acres because of the livestock. Now let's go to the Chihuahuan Desert. Now you can drive for mile after mile through the desert and this is what it looks like. Bare exposed soil with sparse vegetation. So can we take that and radically alter that? Can the desert be transformed? Well, using the simple tools of livestock, adaptive grazing, temporary fencing, herding, and water for the livestock, we can make a dramatic difference. So let me take you through time-lapse photography here on one of these regenerative ranches. Let's go to the Las Damas Ranch in 2015. This is what the ranch looked like after the first couple of years of regenerative grazing. You see that some vegetation is appearing and we're beginning to get some ground cover, but there's still too much bare and exposed soil. But by 2018, you see a radical difference. 
we see the vast majority of the soil is now covered and there's a lot more vegetative growth. But then by 2021, we see explosive growth and tremendous biodiversity returning to the desert. So what has that resulted in? Well, the Las Thomas Ranch has now experienced a 350% increase in net revenue while growing four and a half times more plant biomass and being able to add two and a half times more livestock to the same landscape. But more importantly, we have seen an explosion in bird and wildlife populations to the extent that many threatened and endangered species of birds have now returned to this landscape because they have once again found a habitat that they cannot just survive in, but thrive in. And then the third example, let's go to the southeastern portion of the US. And here, we did a four year study where we compared regenerative farms to their neighboring conventional farming neighbors. We assembled a team of scientists that measured everything from beneath the soil surface to above. And let me share with you some of the key results. Let's start with greenhouse gas flux data. So we deployed edicovariance flux towers on these farms, both the regenerative farms and the conventional farms. And what we found was that the regenerative farms were a four times more powerful CO2 E sink, drawing down an average of 12.1 tons per hectare compared to just 2.9 tons per hectare for the conventional farms. We also noted three times more grassland birds. On the regenerative farms, we averaged counting 442 birds of nine species compared to just 152 birds of six species on the conventional farms. And keep in mind, many of these were direct next door neighbors. So the birds very much knew where the habitat was. We also found 33% more insect species diversity, 25% more living active microbes in the soil. And then when we look at effective rainfall, we found that the regenerative farms infiltrated 2.3 times more rainfall per acre per hour. This equated to an additional two inches per acre per hour. Now, what does that amount to? Well, an additional two inches per acre is another 54,000 gallons of water per acre. So in summary, we have about 265 million hectares of grassland in the US alone, not counting what we have globally. If we were to regeneratively graze those 265 million hectares here in the US, we would draw down another 3.2 gigatons of CO2E annually, while providing habitat to support an additional 740 million grassland birds and infiltrating a staggering 35.3 trillion more gallons of water into our soils. And remarkably, in this four-year study in the southeast U.S., I'm proud to report that 80 percent of the conventional farmers have now transitioned to regenerative as a result of the power of this data. So here's, thank you. So here's where we need your help. We've got a lot more acres to cover. So we've got to educate farmers and ranchers. So we need help defraying the cost for that boots on the ground, hands on education for them. And we also need to start this education a lot earlier. So to that end, we have developed an online curriculum that we call Region Ag 101. And our goal is to put that curriculum in the hands of every school kid across every school system. Thank you.